Hey, you guys, Yulia here. So today's video will be a garden updates video, and I want to start with dahlias. Um, so I planted up some dahlias a couple of weeks ago because some of the tubers that I stored over the winter looked really desiccated and dry. And in order for me not to lose those plants, I usually plant them up either in pots like this. And another method that I use is plant them up in uh, plastic storage bins, which I show you here in a second because I actually placed them outside already. But uh, let me show you the ones that I have here in the plant room. I actually placed them on the uh, sunny windowsill and I just want to show you how they're doing. All right, I have a collection of different plants here. Let me actually move this ficus out of the way so you can see it better. Um, so these are my dahlias that I potted up in pots and they are doing really well. Um, as soon as they started to grow, I placed them here in a uh, southern exposure uh, window and that is quite important. If they don't get enough sun, they will become really stretchy and weak. But I'm actually going to take cuttings of these dahlias because I want to have some more of these specific varieties, um, either to give away to my friends or just plant more in my garden. Another interesting thing about these um, is that I started them in the pit moss. So I don't know if you are familiar with pit moss. It is an alternative to peat, which is non-sustainable plant material that we all use and I don't think that will ever be 100% peat free but I'm trying to do my best for the environment but this uh, particular product is made out of recycled paper and it's produced in Pittsburgh USA as you can see it looks like this and this is the second year I'm using it to start certain plants and as you can see they're doing really well it holds moisture well um, and I just think it's a great alternative to peat. So these are doing really well and I probably will show you in, um, next couple of videos, how to take cuttings of these if you are interested. All right. The next stop are dahlias outside and I set up this little greenhouse here every spring. I uh, will put a link to it in the description down below. I am not sure if it's available, but I'm sure you can find something uh, that is similar. By the way, we had to put some bricks on the bottom here because we had winds yesterday, um, like over 60 miles an hour. So I'm actually surprised <laughs> this is still here. But what I did, I set up the greenhouse and I, um, placed all of my dahlias that I have in these bins, plastic bins outside. So they have a double layer of protection, the protection of the plastic bin. And you can see they're doing really well. The other night, our temperatures went down to 29 degrees and they are great. Look at that. I have a, a little thermometer here and I think the temperatures here are like 10 degrees higher. And if we are having a really warm day, all I do is open up the greenhouse and then I open up the lids. Now, why am I doing this? It's because I don't have enough space in the house. Um, I don't have a greenhouse and this is a residential home and I have to be creative but at the same time you know when those dahlias start to sprout they need a lot of light so this is a good solution for that since i'm here check out the front door pots i think they look even more beautiful than the day i planted them the sir winston churchill are blooming they look gorgeous with those helleborus and the tulips are still here and this is the one thing that is so great about spring containers because the weather is cooler they last forever. Oh, so pretty. And I just cannot resist showing you these beautiful daffodils. These are apricot whorl. Kind of not the easiest thing to pronounce for me, but <laughs> they are gorgeous. Look at that. 
and this whole bed is full of daffodils they are about to come in to full bloom i will show you the entire tour here very soon but the, that's it for now but they're gorgeous and here are other updates for you uh, remember i was trying a new winter sewing method with this plastic bin and guess what it worked like a charm so these are larkspur doing great pretty much everything is germinating here prairie clover which is a beautiful native perennial uh, there's euphorbia marginata there's shades of blue stock so i think we can say this is a success uh, let's check winter sewing bottles um, so this one actually turned over in the wind and i don't think anything will come out of this one the only thing that is really sprouting here is the let's focus here is the blue grama grass um, there's a couple of euphorbia marginata seedlings but i just wanted to compare the bottles with the plastic bin method and so far so good i think they are at par what you doing buddy hey <laughs> do you want to check on some things good job hi give me five. Oh, what a good boy i also took out um most of my bare root perennials the ones i was planting in the video it is definitely time they are hardy enough to be outside and um, start hardening off so i can plant them out in the beds thank you sir all right let me show you some seedlings inside the house and i will start with this uh, kitchen counter and i also wanted to talk about watering your seedlings real quick because a lot of people have questions about that they're not sure if they are over watering them or underwatering them so um, let me just show you what I do all right quick tour of the seedlings first these are my peppers and I cannot believe that this one is trying to bloom already and all of these are my fox gloves the ones that I was bumping up in the previous video look how much they've grown already oh and that's what happens when you give a plant more space to grow they grow i think i lost one right here it's still kind of hanging on to its leaf but i think i'm going to lose it uh this is my lisianthus <laughs> and this is absolutely laughable <laughs> the size of this lisianthus um this is older than any of these I think it's way, way, way older than the peppers. Um, see what I'm talking about? But it's okay, I'm patient. <laughs> and then I have uh, microgreens here. I grow microgreens all the time. Uh, super easy, I just take one of these, um, you know, lettuce salad um, containers from the store and fill it up with some sort of potting mix just a little bit and throw some microgreen mix in it and it's gorgeous and it's so good for you and michael who is not a fan of vegetables but if i add these to his sandwiches he does not mind at all I forgot to show you one more thing and then i'll talk about watering i promise but i pinched my sweet peas uh, the other day and apparently you can save the tops and root them in water and this is what i'm trying this spring this is going to be my experiment but let's talk about watering um and i actually have some really good examples here the one way you can tell that your plants need water is because they're wilting or they're losing their turgor you can see like these limp leaves you really do not want to get to that stage because it can damage the plant but like if you see anything like this definitely um check the soil make sure that it's not too wet because the plants can lose their turgor when they're overwatered as well so um also you can check your plants by weight if the pot seems very light it's time to water it you can stick your finger in it and if it's dry it's time to water it and uh, sticking your finger is actually quite important 
because it can seem dry on the surface, but if you stick like one inch down, they can be uh, wet. And maybe it is not time to water your plants yet, but these are definitely <laughs> ready to be watered. And um, I just uh, use uh, regular water and I check them every single day because of the grow lights, they can dry out rather quickly. I actually check them like 100 times a day because I like to look at them. Um, yeah, that's pretty much the way you can tell that your plant needs water. You know, you can go all high tech. If you are a beginner, I think moisture meter could help. And I will put this in the description down below. But if you're an experienced gardener, um, there comes a time where you can pretty much tell either by the soil color so you can see how like the dry soil is a lot lighter than um, moist then stick your finger in it see if it is dry and how far down it's dry and then obviously if the plant is wilting and losing its turgor it's time to water it All right, let me update you on the seedlings in the basement. And these are the sweet peas that I pinched. And as you can see, they're already starting to grow from the lateral buds. And uh, it just makes them a lot bushier. And I'm also very curious to see whether the tops are going to root. Now, this is my vegetable collection for this year. I'm starting five different types of cucumbers. Uh, there's like the homemade pickles, Express, there is Telegraph Improved, La Bella, and I think I have Lawn Green, uh, Boston Pickling. They look so healthy, you guys. I actually bumped them up about a week ago, and they grew so much already. Like, look how beautiful. I can't believe how great of a quality these are. Oh, and then my tomatoes are kind of falling behind a little bit, but that's okay. I actually have to replant them and bump them up. Like you can see, like there are two in the pot. And as soon as I plant them in their individual pots, I know they will increase in size uh, right away. But I'm super happy with these seedlings right here. Um, they probably have another couple of weeks um, before I can plant them outside. But as long as they receive enough light, I think they will be okay. Actually, uh, let me continue with the watering subject. So as you could see just moments ago, I was watering um, those seedlings from the top. I actually prefer bottom watering. So watering your seedlings in the tray, because this way they can uh, soak up the water through their roots on the bottom and you do not create any algae issues on top of your pot and also gnats <laughs> nuts is a huge problem i don't think i'll ever be gnat free but it definitely lowers the population um, i think the plants just in general prefer bottom watering because it also avoids any sort of fungal issues um, and things like that so all i do is just fill the tray with water probably half an inch and when i come back in half an hour they'll soak it all up okay we're going further into the dungeon i wanted to show you my elephant ears here in the furnace room they've been here for about three weeks probably more and they're just now starting to show signs of life so if you have your elephant ears and they're not doing anything that's perfectly normal but as soon as you see this green growth uh, this guy definitely has to go on a, a sunny windowsill otherwise this will become really stretchy and bleach out possibly this one as well but i could see that they're starting to root because i kind of pull it and it gives me resistance for sure so it's also a sign to start watering them a little bit more. So I water them only once a week before, but if you see um, it's starting to grow, definitely keep up with the watering maybe twice a week now. And of course, I have to do an amaryllis update. The white nymph is still blooming. The apple blossom is uh, definitely on its way out. 
but bestseller just started to bloom and it is so beautiful he gave me two stalks this year really big bulbs i have two more bulbs that are starting to bloom and i could not be happier I also wanted to show you these beautiful daffodils. Um, so these are ice follies and I had them in the back garden and I went out yesterday and I cut all of them because they were saying there was possibility of hail because of the storm yesterday. And I just didn't want these beautiful flowers to be destroyed. And I think they are so gorgeous in a bouquet, just like this. This is about 30 daffodils. And I think this is the largest daffodil bouquet I've ever had. Um, and they scream spring to me. And uh, the beginning of gardening season, and as you can see, the gardening season is full steam ahead in my house with all the seedlings and dahlia tubers and elephant ears starting to grow. So there are definitely going to be a lot more updates in the coming weeks with things unfolding and starting to bloom outside. So definitely keep in touch. And uh, thank you so much, you guys, for watching today's video. And I hope you learned something new and I will see you in the next one.